Live from London, it's Plank of the Week with Mike Graham. Good evening and welcome to Plank of the Week. It's the one show where you don't have to worry about judging anybody because we do it all for you. And tonight, ladies and gentlemen, uh, for your delectation, I have a fantastic panel. Uh, I have, of course, uh, Jeremy Kyle returning once again. Great to see you again, Jeremy. Thank you, my uh, friend. Steve and Allen, stand-up comedian, he tells us. Uh, we'll see if that Well, he's been, sat down, <laughs> he's been sat down so far and he's not we'll that funny. We'll get his, uh, Australia's very own Maddie Hale. Jeremy, you're going to start off with uh, our beloved Prime Minister. Well, I don't think this can surprise anybody. In fact, when you go Keir Starmer, everybody goes, which one do you? What right. a freebie gate. What do you, I mean, it's just Granny ridiculous. Um, one of the big things about this country, which for years nobody would talk about, is the problems we have with immigration. And for years, if you said that, you would, oh, it's racist, you can't say that. Migration, this week, this is astonishing, right? We are now the illegal migrant capital of Europe. For years, people, all the bedwetters would say to me, oh, we don't take as many as France or Germany. We actually take more than any. Check this. There are 745,000 illegal migrants accounting for, in the United Kingdom, in 2024, 1% of our population. Yeah. 1%. Now, this man who is falling by the wayside rapidly, mm. which is joyous to behold, forget, forget freebie gate, forget all that. For me, and I know Mike and I have talked about this, he gave no plan to win that election. All he did, and somebody said to me, the, other, the way you win an election when you are in opposition and the government is not popular, is you tell people what's wrong with their lives and who's to blame for it. The thing is, he never gave an answer. I don't believe for one minute this idiot has any sort of plan to deal no, with this. No. I think he wants to pay lip service to every mm. single different group under the tent of Labour. I think he's in real trouble. But this is not going to go away. And for all it the won't. people who say, you're being really unfair, you don't understand what it's like to live in war-torn Pakistan, let me tell you, right, France... Right? You get a tent, right? The woman in Italy, Maloney, has said, we're not going to be soft. There's a really simple deterrent, Mr Starmer, and I don't think you should have a knighthood because you don't agree with things like that. I you? think we should take it Two off face him. Yeah. Take it off him. If we were less soft on what we gave out to migrants, mm. if we didn't put them in hotels, give them money, send them to the dentist, the doctor, to the detriment of our own pensioners who have paid for years, then we would be in a better position. Does this man have the balls to do that? Does he, no, Ellis? Like, he's a disaster man. We should give an honourable mention to Sue Gray. I think she might get a mention later Quite on. Quite sad. Um, because she's now out of government. Mm. You know, she's oh. supposedly got this new job, uh, <laughs> which is something to do with regions and nations. She's going to Birmingham like yeah, two days a week. Yeah. <laughs> I think that was the first thing to do was sent her to Newcastle, literally. I mean, off you go. That's Coventry's nice. next, you know. Coventry. Um, uh, yeah. Go to Coventry. But, yeah, I mean, the other thing is, is that we unearthed... Uh, um, it wasn't that difficult to do, but just on July the 3rd, he gave an interview to somebody on the stump because it was the day before the election, right? And he actually said the words, we are ready for government. If we are lucky enough to be chosen to get to govern, we have every department ready to go. Yeah, right. We're all ready to go. We know what we're doing. Everything's been costed. We're not going to do anything that is... How he costed. And, and it will not be, he said, a government um, of something like self-aggrandisement. It will be all about the people. <laughs> the psycho <laughs> the the psychodrama will go. I, I would respectfully suggest that he should be planked from now to the end of his, uh, his tenure because... I cannot think, and we were talking about this, that there is any government ever in this country who has been this shambolic yeah. for, for 13 yeah. months. They are an absolute right. joke. And yeah. he is out of his depth He's by pathetic, a mile. He? He's a liar as well. Mm. He's yeah. a liar. Yeah, he is. Yeah. Let's have a look at what reform did this week. It's brilliant. Because they put together a little film uh, to describe how it's going so far. Brilliant. <laughs> From the people that saw the goal. We bring you Labour's Britain. Featuring shivering grandparents with no winter fuel allowance, free clothing, glasses, accommodation, and tickets, as long as you're a Labour MP. Over 11,000 illegal migrant crossings and counting, and trade unions getting every pay rise they ever asked for whilst taxes rise for everyone else. Labour's Britain, starring Free Gear Keir, Robbing Rachel, Red Ed, and Well-Dressed Angela. Produced by Lord Ali, in association with the trade unions. Labour's Britain, out now. That's great, I like that. First ever yeah. AI... Um, Ads. Political AI. commercial. Yeah. It's AI, yeah. political commercial. Did the yeah. reform 
reform, it, I guess. Reform, yeah. made, well, reform are way ahead of everybody else in terms of the use of their social media. Yeah, yeah they they're really good of, on it. Their yeah. use of, 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 you know, of popular kind of methods of, of technology. You know, they're all over it, and they're really on top of their game. And that was based on something that Trump did. Yeah. You know, because I, I just don't think the there's time. anything that you could look at over the last, well, it's 100 days on Saturday, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. And go, oh, do you know what? Um, that's really impressive. Mm. It's been an absolute... You're, you're quite well, a I, shambles. I, I think it's almost more than that, Jeremy. I think it's, it's a case of, in the first 100 days, what have they done for us? Nothing. But what, what have they you, done for us as a nation? What do you expect well, within 100 days? Not playing devil's advocate, but genuinely, what do you expect within 100 days? I don't expect as many self-created okay. yeah. cock-ups and the <laughs> optics are appalling. And listen, I said it all the time, Mikey as well, right? I don't care what anybody tells me. That winter fuel cut to pensioners yeah. will be his poll tax. In five yeah, yeah. years, they yeah. will right. not forget and in that. Answer to, in, answer, from... in answer to your question, when Tony Blair came into power, you know, yeah. they, they had had 13 years or so or, uh, of, of, Tory, of Tory government, but they had a, they actually did have a plan. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. The difference with Tony Blair and, and this guy is that he, he had decent people around him. He was a conviction yeah. politician with a plan. But, but he also he said, right, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. He then did it. You know, in the first 100 days, I can't remember exactly what they'd actually yeah. achieved, but you got the sense that they were running the country. No, most parties will actually just have some very quick wins right at the beginning to just reassure yeah. their electorate yeah. to say, you, you got it right, you voted us yeah. in. But Labour has achieved nothing, absolutely nothing. No. It's just been a trick. And also, all the things they said they would out. do, they haven't done. They said they would freeze um, the energy cost. It hasn't been frozen. The, the yeah. price has gone up. Steve. Yeah, I was going to say, to be fair to them, though. Why? Oh, oh wait, 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 You're on the wrong wait, wait, show, mate. Oh, You're on the wrong Let show. guess out. <laughs> before you know what you're disagreeing with, because it turns out I might be taking the mickey. To be fair to oh, them, Oh, it's humour, sorry. It it's it's sit-down comedy. Yes. They had, Keir Starmer had to unpack. And the guy's got a lot of suits. He does. So I imagine <laughs> the face, you see, yes. that would have been better if it wasn't. Yes. Yeah. He's a cheap and he, can, he can't see much during the election campaign to create a plan because he didn't have any free glasses. Yeah. Exactly. Right. Yeah. He's and he didn't have anything to go to in those right. free suits. And that is the other thing, the hypocrisy <laughs> a liar. that they've been running all the way through. Because we now know that all the things that they said about the Tories, when they said them, they were already in receipt of all this free stuff. Yeah. You know, when they were having a go at Rishi Sunak for having a £180 well, coffee cup, mm. you know, so, Keir Starmer's already had a load of clothing. And, and interestingly, yeah. this week he gave, he said, I'm giving back the £6,000 worth of tickets. Oh, great. But that doesn't actually, that's whilst he was Prime Minister, that doesn't answer, what about the £107,500 worth of freebies you had yes. whilst yeah. you were in opposition, whilst you were slagging right. off, quite rightly yeah. at that moment, the sleaze ridden tourists. There was a poll out this week, uh, I think it was six or 7,000 people, 60% of those people, when questioned to create a word to describe the new Labour government, said sleaze. That's mm. the end of the road. Wow. Yeah. That's not, That's good, not going. I think you're right about the poll tax thing. The, the latest poll shows that they're only one point ahead of the Tories. You know, when they got elected, they were yeah. something like 18 points yeah. ahead. They've lost yeah. it all. I it's mean, this guy, it? it's an impressive record. I mean, nobody's done what this guy's done. I had a, a, a Labour minister, junior minister on uh, this week, Hamish. Faulkner, who's the son of my Lord Faulkner, oh. who of course used to be the Charlie. Attorney, Charlie yeah. Faulkner, who's actually a pretty decent guy, he used to be Attorney General um, in Blair's government, right? But this guy, when I said, well, he said, well, we, people don't care about Sue Gray, they only care about our achievements so far. And I said, which, what, what are they exactly? <laughs> and uh, when he got, the, he got to number three was creating GB energy. And you're going, <laughs> but there is no such thing. No. You might as well say, I've created a fairy at the bottom of the garden because it doesn't no, but exist, even, it doesn't do even anything. Even that was a yeah. con because they announced those new wind farms yeah. which will destroy 100,000 jobs around the Aberdeen area in the oil and gas And produce industry. nothing. And they said, we're going to yeah. put GB Energy's headquarters in Aberdeen. So they absolutely know. Yeah. And he's, by the way, he's a dangerous human being, Ed. that Ed Millipede. Red Ed. Red, Red Ed. What, well, with his uh, ukulele? He's an Did idiot. You see that? He is. Oh, that he's guy. He's been featured on this show. Uh, Steve, over to you. <laughs> I uh, promise not to interrupt you this time. No, it's all right. I, uh, I'm here to watch as well as enjoy. <laughs> and, uh, Sadiq Khan. I know it's cheating doing a, Sadi a Sadiq Khan suggestion because it kind of means I'm going to win. Not necessarily. It's, well, it's a quite, lot of competition. It's quite strong. So the latest... It's presumptuous on week one, isn't it? Yeah. I'm going to win. The latest <laughs> of the... I've, I know what happens on this show. Sadiq Khan, it's a good... It's a, Odds on, isn't he? He's always He's odd. normally up it's there. Exactly on it's it's this time. Time. He hasn't had a bet on anything, Mike and I, he, or taken any freebies at all. He bought those yeah, glasses. The did. overlap <laughs> of the Venn diagram of Sadiq Khan and Freebie Gate, yeah. this is where I'm sat right now, because he has been in receipt of some freebie things. Um, at this rate, the only people at an Oasis gig will be Labour MPs. Yes, They're yeah. getting so many free tickets. <laughs> right. But he's had tickets to Taylor Swift, Madonna, Springsteen, some football, all in total. It's over 100 grand's worth of stuff. Right. And at least with Keir Starmer, you kind of think... Does he might like be, football? 
He, well, he, he never looked like he enjoys anything. No. That's the thing. If I were given that many free things, I'd look happy. Right. Whereas he's always miserable. Stuff. But um, at least with Keir Starmer, you get a sense that you might be buying some proper influence and power. What can Sadiq Khan do? He can turn the road of your enemy into a low-traffic neighbourhood. Yeah. That's about it. That's right. the power that this guy's got. But he's had Bond Premier tickets, ABBA. I mean, no wonder he's too busy to fix knife crime. Unbelievable. Wow. He's very busy, isn't he? But at least, as you said, with the Tories thing, it's baked in, isn't it? So the Tories kind of turn, turn up and say, yeah, we're sleazy, but we'll try and cut your tax, right? Yeah, we'll take it. We'll get yeah. some free wallpaper, but you know, it's baked in. Keir Starmer made it his position to be, I am above reproach. Yes. Please yeah. don't try and reproach me. Because it turns out he's reproachable. He's not above reproach at all, as it turns yeah. out. Also this week, the big story in The Sun, hmm. uh, was Taylor Swift, not just the free tickets, it's but brilliant. the Taylor Swift motorcade, right? Because yeah. we might all remember uh, when she did the shows at Wembley, um, Bizarrely, and this was actually captured by somebody that works for us at Talk, because he was outside his house where he lives near Wembley, um, and he's suddenly having a cigarette, looks out, see, there's a blue lights coming. Well, a bit of a bit of a you know police chase going on. I wonder, yeah, I wonder what's going on. I think I'll film this. Anyway, <laughs> so then you voice. see about you know four uh, motorcycle outriders yeah. coming with the blue flashing lights. Then you see a police car. Then you see uh, we're going to see it in a minute. Then you see four Range Rovers, right? And then you see another police car at the back, another couple of outriders. It looked, he, he, oh, the king. He thought, he thought the king yeah. was going past, right? Because <laughs> no. that was how big it was. It turns out it wasn't the king, it was Taylor Swift. And it turns out as well that brilliant. Sadiq Khan and Yvette Cooper personally intervened, yeah, allegedly, yeah, yeah, into wow. uh, Sir Mark Rowley's office and said, um, look, Taylor Swift's mum's been on and she wants a police escort. And I can also tell you that it's becoming a big, a big fish, this, because it now turns out that James Cleverly has written to Yvette Cooper, uh, in which she says, did you or any of your ministers speak to Sir Mark Rowley about protection for Ms Swift? Um, what advice did you or your ministers receive from Sir Mark or other senior Metropolitan Police officers? Did you or other ministers receive the offer of hospitality before or after nice. decisions were made nice. about Ms Swift's protection? Nice. So, because apparently, um, you'll know this, uh, Will, because you yeah. know about these things. Yeah. The special um, uh, sort of escort squad, I think yeah. they're called, yeah. who are the people that do... You know, they, they can't be bought. These are the people that Prince Harry... You can't. Harry, you see, I mean, this, this is the thing. These you, are the people you, that you, Prince Harry can't pay for. He, no. uh, he explains to me. I, I, mean, I thought it was a different escort. I understand. Sure, I, oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I've, I've... No, well, you see, I mean, I've, I've taken people around in various different parts of the world, in America and, and the continent, and you can actually hire the police. Quite often there's, a, there's a, an agreement that the police officers, when they're off duty, you can actually hire and you can have the blue lights. Here in the UK, which is all governed by RAVAC and, and the Metropolitan Police, and I bet you Mark Rowley must have been spitting feathers if uh, he was given the pressure to, to, to lay on a secure escort for Taylor Swift. Did he Taylor Swift, Taylor Swift? Mark Taylor Rowley? Swift's security team know. is about 30 people. Yeah. So it's a huge team, and there's absolutely no reason why they wouldn't be able to facilitate her movement. I mean, we've all been on the North Circular, and we know how horrendous it is, but... There's no reason why they couldn't have got her up there and why she needed that secure rest. Yeah. Well, they I mean, did an assessment and they, they worked out, despite the fact that there had been threats to, to her concert in Austria and... and, and in it's London, got nothing Europe, to do with them. There was no threat in London no. at all. No, there's, is, no, there, there's no threat on the journey management. At the venue at Wembley, yeah, that's a whole different kettle of fish. We bring it back to Khan and we bring it back to Starmer and I say it almost every day on tour. I am flabbergasted at how... I, I thought it was incompetence. Mm. Now I just think it's downright lies. Yeah, and I, th hypocrisy. I think it's disgusting. Hypocrisy. Yeah. They think they're entitled to it. That's the problem. Yeah. Will, time for you and Mr Chris Packham. So I've got a, a new contender. I don't think Mr Packham's been a contender before, I think has he? he might have been on once or twice because really? he has gone a bit mad. Yeah, he and, has got a, uh, he's uh, got a bit of form, as He has say. got a bit of form. A bit of form. And uh, mainly his allegiances to Just Stop Oil yes. and, and various other climate change clowns who are out there. Um, but in this particular instance, um, he's had a bit of a backfire yeah. on a uh, case, a libel case, that he launched against a pensioner who was a proofreader for a publication called Country Squire, where they alleged that Chris Packham was trying to garnish support for a tiger conservation charity, which turned out, I think, allegedly to be bogus. So he was he was uh, tied in with that whole thing. Anyway, yeah. Chris Packham goes on the warpath, badger baiting normally, but in this particular yeah. instance, pensioner baiting, uh, ends up being sued for about, or, or suing for about 97 grand. Anyway, the judge has now overturned that, and he's been hit with a 200 grand bill, and this pensioner has obviously been reimbursed for his legal costs yes. as well. I mean, it's a complete and utter misstep wow. by, yeah. by, by Packham, but we've yeah. got a little clip of Packham uh, talking about climate change and what he should be doing. It's time to make up my own mind and decide if I think it's time to break the law. If you're an activist 
that's already made a decision that, yes, you're going to break the law, then you'll have my support. And personally, I think I've reached a point where I now consider it the ethically responsible thing to do. I think that's incitement, isn't it? It is. I think that's oh, a criminal offence, actually. Sorry, yeah. I, don't, I don't want yeah. anybody to think I've got a problem with Channel 4. That's allowed to be broadcast. Yeah. A, a, a presenter on a television show is saying, I actively encourage you to go and break yeah. the law. Yeah. That, that, that can't be allowed on television. Oh, no. Where's I've come on that? Well, no, 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 Jezza, it can be, but you can't write it on Facebook. Otherwise, you'd go to jail. Oh, I see. So it's yeah. allowed on a broadcast. I and by the way, dying. what the hell was he wearing? Yeah. I know. <laughs> that? You've got so such an eye for fashion, yeah. Jez. But apparently, according to this pensioner, right, the guy's name, uh, I think it's Paul Reed, he's 70 years of age, he's a grandfather, right? Yeah. He says that Chris Packham vindictively pursued him yeah, through the did. courts, yeah. right? Yeah. Would not leave him alone. No. Uh, basically was trying to ruin him, mm -hmm. uh, trying to ruin his reputation. This yeah. guy apparently is a proofreader for some of the magazine articles yeah. uh, that Packham wrote, right? Exactly. And, I mean, it seems yeah. extraordinary. Wouldn't it um, be great if the judge had said, spend that money on 700 pensioners' uh, winter fuel allowance bill? That would yeah. be nice, <laughs> wouldn't it? Yeah. Exactly right. Here's what Mr Reid said. I felt violated. He said, I believe Packham's pursuit of me was vindictive. I am so relieved all this is behind me now. And I can get on and enjoy what's left of my retirement. It's Aww. been a very tough time. I, know, bless I mean, him. what a bully. What I a know, ghastly yeah, individual. Is... What, well, what, a, what an absolute. Lo when you watch him do that, it's, yeah. better, it's disingenuous. It doesn't even it's look totally real, does it? Yeah. Also, has he got some kind of God complex? You know, if you wait law, you will have my full support. Yeah, yeah. like, <laughs> if anyone was well, not so going to break the law, like, Packham oh, says, go for it. Yeah. Packham yeah. says yeah. it's all right. Yeah. 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 What, are you going to serve the, the sentence? I know I'm going to be arrested, but Packham's on my side. Yeah. Unbelievable. Wow. He's covering the legal Yeah, incredible. I've got, right. the, power. I've got the power of Packham behind me. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Unbelievable. Um, Maddie, over to you. OK, mine's quite funny. Um, I've got Walsall County. Yes. Yeah. You've got to do it in a Walsall accent. Walsall County for spending... Well, Walsall Council. 35 yeah. grand on two statues of corgis. Brilliant. Imagine... <laughs> Wait till you see the corgis. <laughs> oh, do they look good? Yeah, no. No, they do not look good. They do not look good. I think we've got, like a we've got a clip. Chuck, we've got a clip. Scene. Rescue us from this. Have we got a clip? Can you imagine reason, that coming at you? Oh. The reason why it's controversial is all because it costs thirty-five thousand pounds. All these, all these locals are commenting, saying, "Didn't the local council tax just get raised by nearly five percent?" Right. And you're spending yeah. also, X amount of money on this. And there's thousands of potholes in Walsall aren't, too. I think. Aren't they also supposed to be trying to save twenty million yes. pounds off the budget? Yes. But yeah, they're spending it on this kind of. And rubbish. they did look like wolves, didn't Should they? Should we have another? <laughs> <laughs> Can we see them again, Mike? Yeah, we'd like to see the corgis again, please. This is like uh, I haven't been like the jury enough. in Twelve Angry Men. Can we have another look at the knife? Let's have a look at the corgis. Giant corgis. There we are. George. I love the way that they unveil them <laughs> as if it's some amazing thing that you're going to see. Do you remember the original wow. Ghostbusters? Oh, he's clever. Yeah. Rick Moranis turns into some statue. Yeah. It's like yeah. a low-budget version of that. And then it? there's vision of just <laughs> these is. dogs going. Actually, that clips. That, that, that clips great because you've got the old deer who just simply walks past like yes. she, she didn't even just see don't them. Even, yeah. Don't even care if it's a giant corgi. <laughs> it's a bizarre story, isn't it? It's a good one, though. Uh, right, now, coming up in the next uh, bit of the show, um, we're going to get the BBC again, because uh, they always get in uh, in the neck. We've got the NHS again. Um, and Sue Gray, the woman who used to run the government um, until just a few days ago. This is Plank of the Week. More coming up after this. <laughs> So here we are. Um, we talked about Keir Starmer already. Uh, welcome back to Plank of the Week, by the way. Um, Sue Gray, a very sort of strange woman, I would say, you know, because everybody used to say, this is a woman who has the most integrity of any woman that has ever walked the earth, you know, <laughs> when she was that appointed to investigate Boris Johnson, you know, and Partygate. And then lo and behold, it turned out that actually she really did give Boris Johnson quite a hard time, but she was also a Labour apparatchik, which nobody knew at the time. Shortly afterwards, she suddenly gets hired by Keir Starmer and made into the chief of staff of the Labour opposition, right? Mm. Wow. And everybody went, well, that seems a bit odd, doesn't it? Because surely yeah. she shouldn't be able to move from investigating the Prime Minister and getting rid of him to now joining the other side. Mm. But to be fair, she wanted Taylor Swift tickets. She did. And it's the only way to get them. It is. Yeah, and I also, she's them. apparently the one who brought Lord Alley sort of into the Downing Street tent, if you like, um, because she managed to get Lord Alley to give her own son... 10,000 quid. Nice. Who happens to be running to be an MP and is now a Labour MP. So he's in receipt of 10,000 quid. The suggestion is that that's when Lord Ali got the pass into Downing Street. Wow. You know, 
And, you know, don't forget, she was also pictured, wasn't she, at the game with uh, David Lammy and um, Keir Starmer when they went to see Arsenal play Tottenham. They sat in a box and she was in the box, right? Anyway, through the whole process of, of what we've got, the first 100 days that we hear about, she was the architect, apparently, of the first 100 days of, uh, of Labour. And she was the one that was supposed to be running it all. Yeah. And it all went really, really wrong, not least yeah. on day 93, yeah. when she was forced to resign, um, not having actually made 100 days into <laughs> government, which she was planning. But we've got a clip from Keir Starmer, because, as we said earlier, oh, yeah. he doesn't like the truth, he doesn't really know what That's it is. Liar. This is what he said about Sue Gray in 2023. If you're listening to people across the country, they're not talking about Sue Gray. They're talking about not being able to pay the bills. For heaven's sake, talk about the issue, which is of central concern to, I would have thought, most people watching this. They're not, they're not sitting at their breakfast talking about Sue Gray. They're talking about their bills. And if the government focused on the right choices, then we wouldn't be in the mess that we're in. <laughs> oh, Sorry, most oh, people are talking about their bills, you yeah. freeloading, two-faced yeah. piece yeah. of rubbish. Right. Honestly, yeah. they're talking no. about Particularly the pensioners, they're talking about their bills, aren't they? But right isn't now? it funny? It's almost as though Keir Starmer doesn't realise that when he gives these interviews, they're actually recorded <laughs> so that you can play them back later and yeah. see what he said. I think it proves categorically, again, taking it back to Starmer, because mm. you're not winning. Um, on a serious <laughs> note, I think it shows the Sue Gray thing an appalling ability to make a decision mm. because I would guarantee, just my opinion, you might disagree, mm. he picked Sue Gray to yeah. put one over on the Tories to score cheap political points yeah, because she right. brought Boris Johnson down. Mm. And it's bitten him on the backside, which they talked this week about, we need a reset. 93 days in your reset. Who picked you all? Keir Starmer, yeah. which tells you yeah. everything about how bad a leader he is. Yeah. Exactly. And it yeah. turns out as well that this woman, who was meant to be the greatest thing since sliced yeah. bread, actually isn't very good at anything. No. Because it turned no. out that she then got into a spat with this bloke, Morgan McSweeney, uh, who sounds like some kind of character from Lord of the Rings, isn't it? <laughs> Where's Morgan McSweeney? There he is over there. What's he doing now? Oh, he's, <laughs> he's reshuffling the cabinet in a <laughs> radical <laughs> way. <laughs> That's what he's doing. You know, and I mean, I, he's now going to be worse than she is, right? <laughs> I don't know what. I don't know what. We suddenly all like, where's Gollum? Who's Gollum? I don't yeah. know. All things got with. And all that. But so you just, <laughs> I mean, they're in Downing Street, they're running the country, and all they can do is stab each other in the back and leak stories. And yeah. more free, and they can 10 grand for a son. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, now we don't know. She, yeah, that was that the other is thing. Insane. That was the other thing. Sue Gray was a plank. The day that she decided, when they said to her, Are you sure you want to be paid more than the Prime Minister? Because it's yeah. not really you know, a great we'll look, look. <laughs> and people will probably, like, really scrutinise you for it. And she went, no, you're all right, just give me 170 <laughs> grand. It was just a bit Good over, her. wasn't it? It wasn't like it twice was 3, the was 3,000 more. You could have been three... You know, you can get that in three glasses where yeah. she worked. So you could have just been paid slightly less. Wouldn't have been a story. Right. Maybe she's still... And they job. become the story. Like, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Cummins became, like, Alistair and now Campbell. And now and old, I'm going to have to do this every time I've mentioned him now. That old Martin Morgan McSweet. <laughs> he's, he's, <laughs> he's not telling us. Yeah. You know who he reminds me of? The Pirates of the Caribbean, yeah. the little boy. Yeah, ah, Jim, uh -huh. why are we all doing that? Has he got a parrot? Has he got a parrot? But it gets worse. His wife, right, is yes. also an MP. Whose wife? The newly Morgan, Morgan McSweeney's <laughs> wife. <laughs> Mrs McSweeney. Mrs McSweeney. She's an MP, right? Oh, is she an MP too? And, and guess what? what? She's, she's in Scotland. She's an MP from somewhere in Scotland. Oh, God, she's hold the, on. But she's, Off the knock, but she's, <laughs> but she's the private secretary to guess who? Kid Rachel Dunn. Reeves. Oh. Oh, I mean, you know, it's so, so it's, so, it's like so Hello, incestuous. Hello, Mrs Reeves, yeah. how are you now? They don't have to go very far to see each other, you know. It is ridiculous, but, I mean, it's, oh, it's comedy time, isn't it? Anyway. But they're all at it, aren't they? They're they all, all at it. Yeah. it. All of them. And Sue Gray as well, the, the thing that she also got completely wrong uh, was the fact that she said um, after she left, she was basically hounded out by, you know, this boys' club of people who wouldn't let her do her job properly. So she, even now, yeah. even now she's been given this ridiculous title of, you know, envoy... Envoy... <laughs> <laughs> envoy to Birmingham, envoy you're of the nations and regions. <laughs> <laughs> oh. She's got this non-job, right? But she's still leaking to the Times because friends of Sue, of Sue Gray said... She was really, really good at her job, but they just wouldn't let her do it. Oof. Just stop leaking. Yeah. Just stop yeah. it. Which tells you everything about yeah. the whole Anyway, job. Jeremy, over to you. The, the, the lovely BBC. <laughs> the oh, it's me with the, uh, no, oh, I'm the oh, BBC because yeah, I'm going to win. You're oh, the NHS. Yeah. I'm, I'm up You're the this NHS. Um, this was extraordinary, down. and I'll make it really quick. The BBC um, has been for years known, Mikey, as, as this biased, 
uh, they, they seem so intent to be woke and politically correct. And if, you know, they still refuse to call, you know, a proxy terrorist group funded by the mad mullahs of Iran. Yeah. They won't call Hamas a terrorist organisation. No. They call them militants. Uh, everybody knows, of course, that it was um, the, the October the 7th uh, anniversary this year. And, of course, uh, this, this week. And, of course, everybody has their opinions. Um, it, it was an extraordinary thing on the BBC News the other day. They literally ran clips, live footage. No, they ran the whole thing no, live. They ran the, they ran the whole thing. Yeah. The whole 40 minutes. The whole lot of it. Iran's supreme leader. The Ayatollah. 40 yeah. minutes slagging off Israel. If yeah. that is not anti-Semitism, right, yeah. from the base... Well, from basically what our state broadcast... Mm. And we wonder, and I've spoken before and been slagged off on social media, I have many Jewish friends and we all have opinions, but for me, it's a democratically elected government yeah. in the middle of the Middle East and the only one. But if you've got your state broadcaster advocating 40 minutes of anti Semitism, yeah. what hope have you yeah. really yeah. got? And also, as a broadcaster, like you really pick and choose what press conferences, yeah. what live streaming right. you take for as long as 40 minutes. Yes. You're hardly even taking a whole Prime Minister's you press don't. conference. I mean, they probably wouldn't have taken the last press conference from Keir Starmer no. for you an dip, hour. You dip you in and out. after half an hour. That tells that's, everybody I mean, what they think and what yeah. they want. But that's why the BBC is as unpopular as it is. I think it's yeah. almost, it's even more insidious than that. I mean, yes, they gave the, uh, the Khomeini this 40 minutes diatribe of mm. anti-Semitic ramblings. Right. The October the 7th attacks, whether people agree or they don't, and they're supporting Palestine. What people don't understand is Al Qaeda trained the Hamas, who undertook that attack, and Iran sponsored the attack. Right. Yes. And they're still, so basically, and they're still attacking all the BBC Israel are doing, on their own now. Yeah, BBC are just simply condoning right. the October the 7th well, one of the, attack. One of the, quotes, the one of the quotes from him was that the attack on Israel was justified. Yeah. Well, on what basis? On what grounds? Other, other than the yeah. fact that you want to see Israel demolished. And yeah. But don't worry, the students off, are wearing yeah. their, their T-shirts. But, yeah. but they're, they're directly they're aligned to Al-Qaeda. So, I mean, yeah. and Al-Qaeda is a recognised threat since 9-11 even before then, but on yeah. the, the public sort of... I think the BBC's view. an appalling It really is. It really is. We've and got just, to stop paying just so for the you know, um, uh, Sayed Ali Hosseini Khamenei, which is his full name, um, has been the second supreme leader of Iran since 1989. Yeah. Right? yeah. So he's been there quite a long time. And he ain't going anywhere anywhere soon. Um, but let's have a look. Actually, we're going to go brilliant. to Australia for this. Oh. Uh, this is the Australian reaction to the BBC showing that nonsense. The BBC has been slammed after broadcasting the Supreme Leader of Iran's Friday prayers in which he praised the October 7 terrorist attack on Israel. Yeah, the state broadcaster gave 40 minutes, would you believe, of airtime to the Ayatollah's sermon. At one point, the BBC's breaking news headline said Hamas's October 7 massacre was logical and legal. Why on earth would the public broadcaster do such a thing, no. except they're so captured by ideology yeah. and, and so filled with hatred for their own civilization? Absolutely. Well, I never thought I'd say this. Fair well, say, sir. well oh, said. Oh, it? Come, on. Aussie, mate. Come on. It's my, well, you know, my former colleague. Who, but, oh, where, yeah. but where are the people in the BBC saying that? Where are the people, I mean, if that Any was... Any people in this yeah. country saying that yeah. at all. Exactly. Because if you're working for the BBC, surely you should be running into somebody's office and saying, what the hell are we doing? Yeah. And I was actually on the air. And yeah. I, I made the announcement uh, at the same time, and I said, "By the way, if you're watching us here at Talk, we can guarantee you we will not be bringing you, you know, the prayers on a Friday yeah. from the killer Ayatollah in yeah. Iran. Um, but maybe next after that, they're going to pop across to Kabul to see what the Taliban are up to oh, yeah, on sure. a Friday. Get an update know. from them. But it's also right, the, a couple of executions. I mean, I've got a show. lot of. I've spent. I've been into Iran, and I've got some very, very good Persian friends. And, and what people don't really understand is that they're all being oppressed. It's a dictatorship yeah. where he's cool. trying to impose Sharia law. You know, it is not a democratic environment or a democratic country where people this can is elect. Where I don't understand you know, he is all the, the supreme leader. and the unwashed who walk up and down in their T-shirts, yeah. right? Do they actually understand the semantics no, of the very countries that they apparently completely tell us all every day? Yeah. You don't understand. I don't like what I see as happening. But th these people want to go and live at the... one of these organisations yeah. and then come back here. You wouldn't be saying what oh, you're saying Jezza. now. Yeah, I mean, if, if, if any of them actually went down there, yeah. I mean, the vast majority, they'd, they'd be skydiving off the top of buildings. Yeah. Yeah. Steve. Appalling.
Oh, NHS. Now. Oh, I thought there was something to say about Oh, oh yeah, uh, Iran. yeah, definitely. We've um, done yet. 40 minutes. The <laughs> idea of, the only time you take anything yeah. live for 40 minutes is if you need to nip to the loo and you've got problems. Mm. Do you know what I mean? In the old days of <laughs> working on radio, a Bohemian Rhapsody could get you a, a wee bit. Yes. If you, need, if you need 40 minutes, they want to check that newsreader and make sure yeah. there's enough fibre. Absolutely right. I mean, I think yeah. even for those of us who know that the BBC is absolutely in, in captured, as, as they said in Australia, by this kind of ideology of, of anti-Semitism, even for them, People, were, I mean, people in our office were going, what's going on? What are they doing? It's unbelievable. Why, why are they Don't taking take it live? In because, I mean, Sky actually took a little bit of it, but they broke away. They didn't carry the Who? whole thing. Sky, do you remember Sky? Well, do you remember? remember that? Yeah. Not much. No, I know. I had a dish but, once. Did you? <laughs> That's what I've heard. Did you marry her? Hey! Oh, well, I was going to leave it. Comedy. I was, oh, leaving, I, was that. That. I was leaving that one hanging for you. You did. Mike I just knocked them up there yeah. for you. Yeah, okay. Anyway, you want to talk about the NHS? Apparently. I do want to talk about the NHS. So go for it. Let's have a moan about it. Because the NHS, famously, they're an institution with a lot of time on their hands. And what they've done with that time is looked at who can open a fish and chip shop in Wales. Uh, there's a fish and chip shop that's been said it can open as long as it sells a range of fruit and veg. <laughs> Why? Because of what health. Health. Can it be, of is it deep fried carrots? Well, I mean, look, <laughs> you know. I, I would say the potato is a vegetable. The haddock is considered a vegetable in Scotland. So yeah. th there are ways around this, but it's all because they don't want people getting too fat. So I thought carrots. you can sell all that stuff and you've got to have a range of. That's no so one, mad. No one is going to. All that's going to happen is at the end of the day, you've got a lot of fruit and veg to yeah. throw away. No one's turning up going, yeah. oh, it's after some fish and chips. Yeah. But now I've seen that, I'll have a salad. I'll have a salad. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. <laughs> so it won't have any impact, and, it won't and, uh, help at all. They've yeah. got to reduce and their... And a jumbo saveloy. Ooh, Sorry, yeah. a chip shop has to sell fruit and vegetables. It makes That's... no sense. No. Just want out moist, yeah. want curry sauce or gravy. They've also got to reduce... It's Welsh, though. It's a Welsh uh, <laughs> no, shop. Right. Oh, I love it. Oh, yeah. oh, <laughs> I want... I, I, don't know, I want, like, I want a saveloy with some vegetables. I mean, what's happened? I, I bet you don't know what saveloy is, do you? No. It's a big sausage. It's a big sausage. Right. Deep fried. I know what it is. Deep fried. <laughs> anyway. They've got to reduce their fat and salt content as well. How? You're so just is this raw the, ingredients. This is the NHS in Wales, right? Yeah. Has Who, by the way, be? have been run by Labour uh, for the best part of the last, what, 20-odd years? Ooh. Yeah. And they're actually... It's the only NHS service in the world which is worse than the one in Britain. Right? <laughs> well, so it's absolutely extraordinary in the rest of Britain, I should say. In many ways. But I don't think anyone's getting fat on fish and chips because I don't know when the last time you tried to buy some. Bloody it's like expensive. 35 quid yeah. for a normal portion. Yeah, oh, no yeah. one's getting fat on that. Which 80% is batter. Yes. I discovered a very nice fish restaurant actually the other Did day. Did you? Yeah. I might take you there. We're going to yeah. go. Oh, you Marilabon, should take me as well. Marylebone yeah, Lane. Yeah, me too. A Savaloy. It said Marylebone Lane. Which That's is a lovely part of the world. If you're just tuning in, yeah. it didn't quite work. Savaloy for Maddie. A comedian um, says to an Australian, yeah. it's a Savaloy. Yeah. <laughs> never seen one that big before. <laughs> now, uh, have a look at this. This is the first ever chip shop in Dundee. Oh. <laughs> Churchill called them the good companions. They're more than a meal. They're part of a way of life, a social bond, a symbol. An ingredient particularly of Saturday night, though any night can start or end in the bright, sizzling friendliness with a friar's shop. This meal is such a British institution, it's a bit surprising to learn that until about 80 years ago, nobody in this country had heard of fish and chips. Yeah, this really? is from 1965. I don't know where Chuck... Oh, I, thought 19, was, I thought this was 19, a delicacy 1964. for generations. It, it has been. Yeah. Oh. Yes. <laughs> Do you know what old Dundee is famous for? Cake. Oh. You could say jam. Cake? Heroin. It's the heroin capsule oh, of Britain. Nice. Brilliant. Nice. It's the heroin capsule of chips. Europe. I love it. Yeah. Yeah, fabulous. Helps you lose weight. What and it's <laughs> heroin. If you balance the fish and chips and heroin, oh, just right, yeah. you'll be what spot a good on. a bit of a zen bit, you're absolutely yeah. away. Absolutely right. going to politics. I think Steve for next health minister. <laughs> yes. Yeah. 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 Well, he'd be better than West Streeting, to be fair. <laughs> I mean, he hasn't done anything either in 100 days. Anyway, uh, what, what have we got next? Oh, coming up, we've got uh, we've got Will Geddes on the ECHR, yeah. um, which is coming up next. And also, Maddie's got something from a supermarket. Uh, we'll yeah. bring you back to uh, Plank of the Week off. <laughs> Welcome back to Plank of the Week. Will Geddes is up next. Uh, the ECHR. I know, don't we love them? And Jeremy we and I were talking about these people just this week. Yes. So the European Convention of Human Rights, yeah. uh, which sounds so vitriolic and sounds so sensible, but um, is affording uh, Albanian criminals, one very notable one who was sentenced to two years in prison yeah. here for burglary, had uh, arrived in the country illegally yeah. in the back of a lorry, uh, then was uh, released for compassionate reasons to go back to his mum who was dying 
back in Albania after three months, I think, of serving, or six yeah. months of serving, and then managed to smuggle himself back into the country uh, where he married his Lithuanian girlfriend and then could take a stake as a British citizen. No, had a baby. And had a baby, yeah, but that's the reason why, under lovely yeah. Article 8, yeah. which is the right to privacy and family life. Right. Now, we, I thought when we, I thought when we voted for Brexit... Burgled. Sorry. What about the rights of the people whose house he burgled? Well, exactly. And also, there's some nice footage going around social media at the moment of him in his Ferrari. Yeah, that's a different guy. That. That's, a, that's another oh, is that Albanian. another one? That's yeah, a different that's Albanian, one. yeah. Okay, He's so, driving around a £300,000 Ferrari. Which is particularly nice. He's been now, reported twice, but he keeps coming back. So, yeah, exactly. So, you I don't mean, buy I, a 300 grand Ferrari, could I just respectfully suggest on burglary, do you? No. Uh, well, no. back to no, you again. Exactly. Say about yeah. Dundee, crack on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Boom. Yeah. So, anyway, we've got the, the, this whole issue of illegal immigrants using and exploiting uh, the European Convention of Human Rights to stay in this country, yeah. which is a massive, massive problem. And as Jeremy was saying, in terms of the numbers that we've got here, but there's even more insidious element, which is a revisit by them to try and prosecute members of our special forces, the SAS, the SBS, and the Special Reconnaissance Regiment, for uh, claims against maltreatment or mistreatment by, by them in various different operations. Now, we've got the good, bad people who are going after the bad, bad people, yeah. and they are being prosecuted. And we've seen this before. There's the, the, the lovely Brian Wood, who you may have heard of, Military Cross for the Battle of the Danny Boy, Battle yeah. of Danny Boy, uh, which was actually uh, serialised into a show on ITV. It's well worth watching. And poor old Brian was thrown through the mill by this horrible claims lawyer called Shiner. Oh, yeah. Who's subsequently actually gone to prison now. And who oh, basically yes, went down guy, to yeah. Iraq, got all these made individuals... Made a load of false claims. Made a load of false claims and basically got them compensation... Uh, again, under the European Human Rights Convention and, and assisting them. Now, three former commanding officers, CEOs of the SAS, uh, Tutu SAS, who have actually come forward, they wrote a very, very strong letter to the Times to say, this is going to deplete our numbers. Right. And understandably, I mean, it's hard enough to get into special forces as it is through selection, yeah. but you've now got a shortage of people where people are going to go, why am I going to do that? Why am I then going to do high-risk right. operations and then potentially get sued off right. the back of it? Yeah. It's ridiculous. It's also, just how crazy. Can you tell the SAS? And I thought when we did the Bre when we did Brexit, we were excluding ourselves from that. Yeah. This is yeah. what we've got to we've got to bring back yeah. the controls into our own country. Right. Well, the fact about human rights is that we've had plenty of human rights in this country for decades and decades and centuries and centuries before the yeah. CHR was invented. It was invented after the Second World War, yeah. nothing to do with the EU, to protect people from the things that happened in the Second World War. But we don't really need that anymore. Well, it got it changed doesn't really in 1998. Work. It got updated in 1998 mm. with this Article 8, which has come out, who even Theresa May was opposed to. Yeah. And Article 8 really just gives you this bubble, and as you were saying, Jeremy, it, he managed to, to, to exploit the system, and there are enough lawyers out there who are assisting illegal immigrants to exploit the system by marrying in country and having a child. And, for those, and, and then for those laws. they're a burden on us and as taxpayers. And who's paying for those laws? Right. The, British, the British taxpayer. Exactly. What, what is extraordinary is it's a bit like the NHS, this sort of revered thing. The ECHR, I suspect that many people that voted for Brexit thought that that would be included. It's not. It was yeah. 70 years ago, probably at that time. It's not fit. For purpose. No, it's not. All these people do is yeah. basically say to me when I bring this up, they go, well, you, you've got to show moral responsibility, no. humanitarian arm. I'll tell you what, I think this country is quite capable of organising and understanding its own human mm. rights abilities. Yeah. Yeah. This, this, this court, this, this law, those judges are denying us the opportunity to make decisions in our own country. It needs exactly. to go. Mm. Exactly. Well, I don't understand about this particular case as well. If Article 8 has, you know, the yeah. right to a family life, well, everyone involved in that family has the right to live elsewhere. Yeah, yeah. You wouldn't exactly. be separated. Have the yeah. family, yeah. Yeah. Go back to where you came right. from, in Albania, and have yeah. a family there. It's perfectly nice And be a burden on their town. No, it's a war-torn yeah. place. You only get a no, tent. Albania's not. I mean, Albania's are you sure they're not, not at war? No, oh, it's right. actually Albania's quite, fine yeah. since, quite a, since quite the, the, the Bosnian conflict. conflict. Yeah, it's quite conflict. a safe country yeah. now because all the gangsters have come to London. Yeah. To drive Ferraris. To drive Ferraris, yeah. Maybe there's a right to drive a Ferrari. Well, most of all, without wanting to blemish the entire Albanian community, but a vast majority of of organised crime in this country is run by Albanian it is. And it's not just in this country, oh. it's all yeah. over Europe, you yeah. know. Anyway, Maddie, Perfect. over to you. Well, I don't know if I'm nominating Waitrose or the woman in this one, but okay. a woman has, the 42-year-old woman has been hospitalised. Um, when she went to a Waitrose in Bath, she claims that a cauliflower <laughs> fell from the fourth this row is. of a supermarket shelf onto her head and she suffered 
a concussion from it and therefore couldn't couldn't work. She's looking and she's been vegetables. quite triggered by this. And <laughs> so Waitrose apologised and I think they gave her a £25 voucher. And, <laughs> Brilliant. And, uh, Brilliant. Eight, 25 and quid, that's a lot of 25 quid. Isn't it? And we'll get you three things in Waitrose. And then <laughs> three eight, things in Waitrose? Eight, of any, any shelf? That's not true, actually. I shop in Waitrose all the time. You get plenty for 25 Really? Yeah, yeah. You, I can get you five. And you are a chef. Okay, you get five. Uh, yeah, I can, you get five bottles of wine for 25 oh, okay. in Waitrose. <laughs> yes, yeah, it could be um, rotten wine. Like, that, you know. That's what you're shopping for. But then they gave her an eight pound... Um, eight pounds for a taxi ride home. <laughs> anyway, she, I think that's more than generous. Cauliflower. Sorry, we've got to a point where some woman... A cauliflower fell on her head. Assaulted yeah. by a cauliflower. Yeah. What a She's load of Quite traumatised. She, she kind of, literally you know, said, she, I was she very... She out on the floor. She said, I was very unwell and I'm still suffering and unable to wa work. I don't know how the cauliflower fell, <laughs> but they should not store heavy... I can't heavy. work because the cauliflower yeah. landed on me, Ed. And then, the wa and then Waitrose had to issue a statement to the Daily Mail, which oh, they obviously so. were quite confused why they had to do that. And they said, <laughs> our customer was seen immediately by a trained first aider at the time yeah. of the accident. I'm sorry to hear she is unwell. That's How ridiculous. Short is she I mean, because I mean, they're see... not stored particularly high. Are they? I do, I've never short. seen them. I've never rigid. seen them. Yeah. No, they said that he, she said like the fourth shelf or something. But really? Am I crazy? Is are they heavy? I don't they're know. Not, no. no, in fact, cauliflowers. Are, I mean, if you get a really big one, it's about that size. Was but it imagine, frozen though? Imagine if it was a watermelon. <laughs> you know, yeah. they don't really sell those in waste shows very much. Or a pumpkin. Or a pumpkin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I bought a pumpkin. That time, yeah. In waste shows. Like, yeah, like, like the topicality. You, you, you could. That was very good. Yeah. I could. If you drop that on somebody's head, I could, yeah. yeah, yeah, but not but a cauliflower. This is a, this is an example of a country where people will do anything, anything, anything. Yeah. Do you know what's going to happen now? Right. Next time you go to a supermarket, there's going to be people hurling vegetables at each other. Yeah. I was going to say, I'm going to do that when throw I get back to my office. Throw the cauliflower at me. God, this, this is Martin, why, where's my carrot? This is why the NHS in Wales is wrong. If you put stuff like that in a fish and chip shop, someone's going to die. Yeah, exactly. Stick to the fish and chips. You're absolutely Dangerous. Right. Unless it's battered. Dangerous stuff. <laughs> yeah, um, well, it would get battered, wouldn't We're it? getting nearly to the end of the show. Um, coming up, I give you my final nomination, and it's a man who used to be First Minister of Scotland, believe it or not, uh, and then we'll choose the winner as well. This is playing the winner. Welcome back to Plank of the Week. So, and we're very nearly in the final furlong, just a few moments to go. And my final nomination is the one and only Mr. Humza Useless, oh, as yeah. I like to call oh, him. Um, he hasn't him. been in it for a while. Is he still around? He is every, still around. Every well, time I'm on the show, he's here. Yeah, well, the thing is, <laughs> he still bothers me, right? Even though, luckily, he's not running Scotland anymore. Um, they've given that back to John Swinney, who used to run it years ago. Can we um, see the scooter in? Uh, yeah, happen, well, of course, it? we're it's showing fine. that. But, yeah, you know, you've got to, you've got to, timing is everything, Will. You know, you've got to wait for me to introduce it. God's sake, man. Let anyway, him moment, so, Will. you know, on Saturday, there was yet another of these ghastly pro-Palestinian marches, right? Uh, and it was on the eve of October the 7th, literally two days before October the 7th, Humza Useless came down to London to not only take part in the march, but to march to the front of it and to be interviewed by Sky News while he was marching, right? And then he also made a speech at the end of the march, right? None of which said anything about the hostages and how awful the, October the 7th had been. Instead, he wanted to make sure that basically the government should be holding Israel to account. Oh, I mean, God. not only was the timing wrong, yeah. but it was hideously, you know, in bad taste. He said, I'm here very simply because in almost a year, just shy of 365 days, we've seen a complete and abject failure of moral leadership from the UK government. Oh, for God's sake. I mean, can That's you imagine how, how tone deaf the, is that? some yeah. of the families would feel? I think we've got a clip of him actually on the march. It cheapens anti-Semitism by saying that criticism of the Netanyahu government is somehow anti-Semitism. When there's Israelis who disagree and march in Tel Aviv in their hundreds of thousands against the massacre that's taking place. But so I just find this man to be completely odious. He also, um, when he was First Minister, I think, um, was handing out quite a few grants and things to people um, who were connected to Gaza. He just, he just disappeared, uh, if you it? remember when there was, the, I think it was a COP summit over in Ooh. Dubai, yeah. took a little yeah. side trip to meet um, President Erdogan from Turkey, which he wasn't supposed to do because he doesn't have any foreign policy role, no. right? He's the, he's the, he, he runs one of the nations and, and uh, what is it, nations and... and 
What is it? Home nations. Yeah, one of the no, but you know the job that Sue Gray's got. Oh, uh, nations and no, regions. I mean, Scotland, that's all he does. Yeah. Yeah. That's all he does. <laughs> and so he shouldn't have. Well, and, and, he, and he was upbraided, in fact, by the then Foreign Secretary David Cameron, who said you should not be meeting foreign leaders. No. You are not a foreign yeah. leader. Exactly. You are not a leader of anything other than yeah. you know. I'm a surprised small... Erdogan even took an audience. With I know. Yeah. So anyway, in, in, in offering to you, Will, uh, I Thank just you, thought sir. we should check in Thank you. and see how Humsy Useless is getting on now. <laughs> <laughs> I love this. That's brilliant. And it's a trike as well, isn't it? Yeah. That's brilliant. <laughs> I mean, again, still... please, Mike. Can again. we? Come on, <coughs> come on, let's do it again. It's just the way. He, it's just the way he falls. I'm sorry. Yes. Come on, then, Chuck. Let's let's have another go. It's just brilliant, isn't it? I mean, honestly, oh you just know when it's not going to work. Yeah. yeah. Here he goes. So oh, hey! Hey! <laughs> and it looks quite. Crazy. I thought you were going to say to me that he took the scooter to the to the rally. No, yeah, no, because great. actually, no. He, <laughs> Did he, he manage to walk? I he thought you were going to say he was able to walk and be interviewed at the rally beam, without falling. Of him that would be toned down. That would be. You, you know who do, does beam. deserve a cauliflower to the head? Yeah, he does. <laughs> well, exactly right. Yeah. But of course, we wouldn't encourage anybody to be violent on this show. Because we're not. No, of course not. Of course not. It'll trigger me, and I might have to sue Waitrose. Yeah, exactly right. Now, so I mean, we have quite a lot of really, really good nominations here. Yeah, obviously. Um, Sadiq Khan is not a bad one. Not a bad one. Quite current. The BBC, also good. Um, I think Keir Starmer, again, difficult to say no to that. Cauliflower. The cauliflower, no, I don't think it's oh, as okay, good. Oh, okay, rude. It's European not as good as, convention. Uh, yeah. Right. Yeah, but, yeah. yeah. I mean, I don't know. I think it's... Chris Mackham. I think it's between the BBC... Yes. And yeah. Sue Gray, actually. I actually, actually, no, I, I think it's totally agree with you on that. Should we have a, a BBC, vote? Why don't we have a vote? Should, they, they should vote because we're... You can have a vote. I actually no, you can. BBC. BBC. You, BBC, um, BBC. Yeah. Well, I'm against anything that's like... Uh, Not state, Sadiq Khan. No, anything that's... <laughs> 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 it's anything that's state funded and useless, so you can pick either one. Yeah, you yeah. can actually. That's true. Um, I don't know. Um, oh. I can't, it's hard for me to nominate since I give myself the Come win. On, Mike. You, Go on, you see the excitement on, on my face at the thought the right. BBC is going to win. I'm Come on, let's give it to Jeremy. Come on, the BBC. Yeah. The BBC. The BBC. The BBC. I mean, well, to be honest, broadcasting 40 yeah. minutes of anti Semitism, a state yeah. broadcast, right. is Agreed. disgusting. It is. And I, for that, the BBC. You get, oh. where's the noise? <laughs> get, where's, <laughs> where's the oh, noise? noise? Try oh, it again. I'll give you one more you chance. Don't get that but the BBC, beat you around the head with it. Yay! Yay! Well done, everybody. Thank you to Jeremy. Thank you to Steve. Thank you to Will. And thank you to Maddie. Uh, we'll see you the same time next week for more plankery.